Aileen has a deep understanding of the impact, role and value of digital and social media marketing in business today. She's a degree in business in German and a master's on developing a social media marketing strategy for SMEs. It's wonderful to be surrounded by so many truly inspirational women um, and fair play to all of us. We've taken the hard route rather than, uh, for the most part, in starting up our own business uh, rather than uh, going as employers. Um, so, uh, so, my name is Aileen McGrath and um, as Sienna said, I have worked in industry for many years in sales and marketing, international marketing. I've run my own business. I've started up a new business and more recently worked and studied in the areas of uh, digital and social media marketing. So doing some part-time lecturing, mentor with EI and I am very fortunate to be working with uh, the fabulous team of creative designers um, and marketing experts at uh, One Little Studio um, Marketing and Design Agency here in Killaloo. Okay, so um, having walked the walk and, and talked the talk of running your own business, I can relate to all of you. So finding the time to promote your business can often take a back seat. But in today's highly digital and ever online world, social media marketing and digital marketing is no longer a choice. It has become a strategic imperative. So today, my hope is that I can give you some tips and some food for thought as to how you can maximize the opportunities for social media in your business. I'll try to keep it simple because I believe understanding the basics and the fundamentals are the most important starting point. So, firstly, to give you a sense of the importance, the scale, and a little bit of context today, I'm going to start with some interesting statistics that will hopefully blow your mind. So first of all, half the population are actively using social media today. 1.8 billion of them on Facebook alone. That gives you a sense of the potential reach of social media. Oops, we're in the wrong direction. 2.5 billion of those using social media access it through a mobile device. And in fact, more people in the world today on a mobile phone than a toothbrush. 135 minutes is the average time per day spent on social media. If you have teenagers in your house, you can multiply that by three. 70% of businesses use Facebook. Video today accounts for 69% of all consumer internet traffic. For the world of Snapchat, 700 million pictures and 500 million stories are shared per day in this new world of ephemeral content. And seven seconds, I'm afraid, is our average attention span online. So some food for thought there. So, bearing those mind-boggling but also very real statistics in mind. There are six things that you can do as a small business to try to maximize your social media potential. Know what your business is about, your brand message. Who is your customer and where are they active? What does your customer want to hear from you? When and how often do you communicate? Measure engagement and performance regularly and integrate with online and offline marketing goals. So, I'm going to go through each of those points in a little bit more detail. Firstly, know your own business, okay? So, earlier, uh, Teresa took us all through the journey of um, summarizing our business in what was 30 words. I had 20 words there initially because Twitter have now gone and changed from 140 characters to 280 characters, but we get the message. So the thing is, it's one of the most useful exercises that we can do in marketing anyway, is to think about who we are and what our business is. And if we can narrow that down and hone it in, we've taken a huge step. Because following on from that comes, 
what our product is, who our customer is. Everything flows from that. Okay, so it's one of the most important exercises you can do. Similarly, online is as important, if not more important. You have to be clear and you have to be consistently clear about what your message is on social media and digital. Because bearing in mind, you only have second seconds, seven seconds of an attention span from people today. Plus there's loads of other information going out there all the time. Okay? And the rule of seven from marketing um, theory applies here. Seven times is the number of times that people need to see your message before they remember it or before they take action. So, sorry. So, be very clear about what your message is on social media and use that same message throughout every social media platform and every digital platform that you use. And the screen has frozen here, so if somebody can help with technical. Interesting, isn't just the one area where we're talking about technology? Thank you. <laughs> Super, thank you so much. Okay. Secondly, um, and then following on from the elevator pitch, I suppose, is who is your customer? Okay. Um, and, you know, we can often say, okay, I know who my customer is. My customer is women um, who buy clothes, for example. We need to understand and know our customer in a bit more detail than that. We need to do it anyway for our business, but we need to even more so for digital marketing and social media marketing, okay? Because the more we know about the customer and the, no, the more we know about what they like, how they behave and what they do, we know where they're active then on social media, so we know where to find them but then we have a better chance of connecting with them if we know more about them. And it's a faster route to engaging them, which is ultimately what we want to do on social media, is engage with our customers and build relationships, connect with them, develop relationships. We need to be customer-centric more than ever. Today is the age where the customer is truly king. We have to think like our customers more and more today because they are the ones that are online. They are the ones that are driving our brands. They're collaborating with us to develop products. They're talking about us online. We have to think like our customers, put ourselves in their shoes. And then can we connect better with them and develop better relationships with them on social media. So. When we think about the different platforms, okay, and let's take the four main ones here, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So for those of you who are starting out or those of you who, okay, just maybe working a little bit on the different platforms, let's clarify what each platform here is about, okay? So Facebook, where you have 1.8 billion people actively talking um, about their experiences and uh, communicating with each other. Um, it's a social networking site, as you know, okay? It's about having social exchanges. Groups of people with a common cause, with, a com with common interests, are talking to each other. As a business, you need to join in in that conversation. Find a way to join in in that conversation. Humanize your business. Your business has a personality on Facebook. That's what Facebook is about. It's about being social. Usually the user profile, mainly business to, cost, uh, business to consumer, communities of mutual interest. You will get some business to business on Facebook. And it's about social exchanges, as we said. The communication style will always be personal and informal. On Twitter, which gets a lot of slack, I think, these days. But Twitter, I think, it's a microblogging site, as you know gone from 140 characters to 280 characters. So you have a little bit more time. It's the world of hashtags and it's the world of mentions. Okay? If you want to be real time, which like today's event, it's a real time event. And if you want to communicate about real time events and get in in the conversation on everyday media, interesting stories, um, what's happening in the world, then Twitter is the, prof is the platform to be on. 
okay? Also, if you're in the area of sports, if you have a personal brand that you can promote, you're a celebrity, um, and you're involved in the media. And also, if you're a local business and you want to get in with local media, don't disregard Twitter. It's where it's all at. Knowledge acquisition is another useful thing to use Twitter for. Um, if you want to learn about a particular subject, if you go into, um, say, hashtag social media, you will find so many different resources and so many different people promoting information and sending out information on social media. You'll have done the course in a couple of weeks. So, in terms of communication style, it's short and to the point, but friendly. So if that fits with your business, then go with Twitter. LinkedIn, as we know, is a professional networking site. So, um, I presume everybody here has a LinkedIn profile. Thank you. Um, so, as professionals, individuals, and for our individual brand, we need to be on LinkedIn, okay? Um, it's mainly a business-to-business -business platform. And LinkedIn tends to be overlooked a lot of the time, but LinkedIn is an excellent platform for lead generation and for making contacts, for finding suppliers of products, um, and for learning about what's going on within a particular industry. So don't disregard LinkedIn. Um, and also, obviously, for professionalism, for, for, for recruitment agencies and for people who are looking for new jobs, you need to be on LinkedIn. The tone is always professional and more formal. So Instagram. Instagram is the image and video-based mobile app, as you know. If you have a visual element to your business at all, LinkedIn, or Instagram is where you need to be. Okay, so it tends to be mainly business to consumer and the shoppers of the world. So kids are using it quite a bit for their sportswear and for Zara and so on, all these, these high profile brands. Okay, um, but then uh, lots of businesses like restaurants, Bean and Dingle being one of the, one of the um, I think, most interesting um, companies using um, Instagram at the moment, just for their whole visual element to get a sense of what is happening in a restaurant or a cafe or what food is there or clothing and so on. Anything with a visual element, you need to be on Instagram. It tends to be generally men millennials and generation X, so the younger generation, but that's changing all the time and it's growing at a phenomenal rate. So it's much more fun and lighthearted. So they're just some of the platforms. Now we also have Snapchat social messaging, which is um, experiencing phenomenal growth. Um, and also, um, I suppose Pinterest can't be disregarded either. If your business exports to the States, Pinterest tends to be you know, 70 percent um, uh, females based in the United States, then don't disregard Pinterest either. Hugely visual element too. Okay, so our third little tip here. What does your customer want to hear? So, in essence, what is your content plan? What kind of information are you going to send out there to your customers? How are you going to connect with them? How are you going to engage your customers and develop your brand on social media? Okay, you've got to listen to what you, your customers like. Listen to what they're engaging with. Practice active listening on social media platforms. Have a look at what they engage with in, in terms of content on other businesses that are similar to you if you're only just starting out. Or listen to what they're saying about your company. And then make sure that whatever content that you put out there is interesting, it's relevant, it's useful, it has a purpose, it's engaging and it adds some sort of value. Because remember, you are trying to set yourself apart and you're trying to get people to notice you in a very, very busy and very, very noisy world. And also, don't forget that whatever content that you put out there as well, you need it to work for you. You need it to drive traffic to your website, to your blog, to your online um, store. So don't forget about that either. 
and make sure that you mix it up. Make sure you have the right mix of video, infographics, knowledge, images. Make sure that you're not boring, that you're always interesting. I love this quote from David B, who looks after content marketing with the Marriott Hotels. He says, content marketing is like a first date. If you only talk about yourself, there won't be a second one. <laughs> so keep it interesting. So here are some examples then of the good, the bad and the ugly will follow in terms of content and what works. So just here, um, the first one, you can see the, the three, um, three cups here. So this is a Facebook um, post from um, big brand Oreos. And Oreos um, try to make things a little bit more interesting and try to be a bit more innovative. And it's a good example of it here. So you know this game where they put the ball, or in this case an Oreo cookie, under the cup and you have to guess which one it's under. Okay, so it's just a short little video showing this. So, why use something like this? It's because it's interesting and it's engaging. But what was the net effect of this? People shared it, and they shared it, and they shared it, and everyone wanted to try it out. Okay, so it became hugely engaging and had great shareability. So, we have to try and be a little bit innovative and a little bit creative. And I know this place is oozing with innovation and creativity. Another example here, which I really like, is um, the John Deere one on the top. So when they started out on Facebook, they wanted to grow their number of followers. So here, their post had purpose. So they just used their little tractors and all their key rings and, and their, their uh, material to create a like. So just simple, but highly effective. Okay, so then underneath there is, um, I suppose, an interesting use of the hashtag concept. Charmin, the American company who um, manufactured toilet paper. <laughs> so the word is, so we had a lot of coffee and oatmeal for breakfast today. Any guesses as to what time we'll hashtag tweet from the seat? <laughs> so their tweet from the seat is used quite a bit when engaging and sharing content on Twitter. Okay, and uh, the Cliff House Hotel, I think, in uh, Waterford have a very interesting one. They have uh, the three word tweet, which is an initiative that uh, Adrian Bartel started up there, an interesting company to follow on Twitter. So, next, the bad and the ugly. If we look here uh, first at the uh, car post, so this is uh, Skoda, um, and they Title if you, or the caption there, if you can't read it, is share this picture if you are excited for the sunny weekend. Okay, so what does that tell you? Nothing really. So what are they trying to achieve with this? They're trying to promote their cars, obviously, but are they going to engage anybody? Are they going to inspire anybody? Is there anything interesting or useful to be gained from this post? No. So think about what it is you put up there. Okay. Entenmann's here, which uh, again an American company um, who, who produce cakes and, and, and um, confectionery, who have huge following on, on Twitter. Um, a couple of years ago, um, this is a kind of an example of how not to do hashtags and not to jump on the hashtag trend um, without thinking about what it is you're doing. So um, they uh, did the, uh, what's hashtag not guilty about eating all the tasty treats they want. Um, and the hashtag not guilty was trending at the time um, to do with a, a Clay Anthony's murder verdict. So quite an insensitive one. Um, and the family didn't appreciate that, obviously. So um, there was a huge backlash from that. And um, they spent a lot of time apologizing for their hashtag not guilty um, initiative. So just a couple of examples there to uh, see how to and how not to do it. So when and how often to communicate on social media. Um, and this is an interesting one. It's, Facebook, um, here we start with, and, and, and these uh, summaries have come from um, the 
marketing agencies like Hootsuite and um, HubSpot and so on that do lots of uh, research um, and analyze um, when and how often people communicate. But basically on Facebook, they say the best times to post are between 12 and 1 on Saturday and Sunday, 3 to 4 on Wednesdays, and 1 to 4 on Thursdays and Fridays, which is quite specific. Um, what I would say to you, um, you need to post, if you're using Facebook, you need to post on Facebook every day. Um, engagement rates will increase from Wednesday um, as we get closer to the weekend. And the evenings tend to to get higher engagement as well. Don't discount Facebook at the weekend. People use Facebook at the weekend. A lot of businesses forget to use Facebook at the weekend because it's the weekend and they're off, but it's actually a time when a lot of people engage with businesses um, um, or engage more and have more time to spend on Facebook. Um, and in terms of frequency of posting, there is an actual correlation between frequency of posting and improved engagement. So, you know, three to four times a day at least on Facebook in order to stand out from all of the, the other people that are posting there as well. So Twitter. Um, Twitter tends to be used Monday to Fridays between 12 and 3 p.m. for the most part and peaks 5 to 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. Okay so again that's just a guide but um, you know I think Twitter um, between 12 and 3 particularly during lunchtime um, a lot of people who, who consume media information are using Twitter um, first thing in the morning and in the evening again or other peak times and again weekends drive higher engagement on Twitter. LinkedIn as we know it's for, for professionals but what happens on LinkedIn is people tend to check before they start work so they arrive into the office um, or sit down at their laptop and check before um, they start their work day and they check again at lunchtime and check again in before they leave work. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays seem to be the more popular days. Okay, um, and the thing to remember on LinkedIn as well is, um, you know, people are people and, um, you know, they like to be the first ones to have the information. Um, and if you work in a particular industry, you want to be seen as the expert in that industry. So there are things to remember too when you're posting on LinkedIn. Instagram. I think we can safely say with Instagram, any time of the day, every day, is when to post because again, it's mobile, it's fast, things are happening all the time. The, the um, experts would say Monday through Thursday, except between 3 and 4 p.m. I don't know why between 3 and 4 p.m. because most kids are on their way home from school maybe and they can't multitask, um, walk home from school, carry the school bag and do Instagram at the same time, I'm not really sure. Um, but I think, again, don't discount it at the weekends either because um, I think you know a lot of people do discount social media platforms at the weekend um, and that's when a lot of engagement is, is taking place and particularly if your business is in hospitality or retail. So leading us on then to measurement and performance. We're at a time in marketing like never before where everything is measurable and everything that we do can be monitored, measured and then used to inform our strategy. But we tend to ignore it an awful lot. We forget to use the free data and information and intelligence that is there. Okay, so don't forget to use the information that you have on Facebook Insights um, and on your Twitter analytics and also bring in your Google Analytics and get them all to work together to help to inform you, to help show you how you're performing in terms of growth and reach, where your followers are coming from, who they are, in terms of how your content is performing and how people are engaging with your content, what they like more, what do they share more, and use that to help guide your future content and determine what you're going to talk, to about, talk to people about in the future. Monitor how much traffic is going to your website from social media. And then you take this information and apply it to your strategy. Learn from it, use it. And it's all free. So our sixth point then, and our sixth tip to help you out, is to remember that 
what's happening in marketing today is it has it has changed in the sense that everything is integrated okay so when we practiced marketing before and we put ourselves out there we used our brochure and our business card okay the goals are the same but just the mediums have changed and we have to align all our marketing activities of which there are many we have to consider our social media what our content is and what our message is and be clear and consistent about it we have to align that with our email campaigns and we have to align it with um, our search engine optimization and what keywords we are using um, and then bring in the non the offline events and offline initiatives and brochures and you know, um, anything else that we do any other marketing initiatives that that we do because we are trying to connect with people at every available touch point and sending out our message to them clearly and consistently so this is i suppose what we call in marketing now the, the flywheel effect okay so you're using every single one of these mediums to improve to gain momentum to build a buzz about your business and to make sure that you build a long-term business so really how things have changed is that we don't have a choice and a quote from Eric Qualman who's the author of social nomics we don't have a choice on whether we do social media anymore the question is how well we do it and then I suppose I want to leave you with a quote as well from Sarah Blakely who is the founder and CEO of the billion dollar dollar Spanx organization if you're feeling the fear a little bit in terms of social media and digital bear this in mind and in terms of your business in general don't be intimidated by what you don't know that can be your greatest strength and ensures that you do things differently from everyone else. I hope that these tips have been some way useful to you. I didn't feature on the, I didn't um, go in too much detail about the features and functionalities because we don't have time today of the different social media platforms. But just <coughs> remember that social media and digital marketing in general is very much like basic principles of marketing you have to be clear about who you are you have to be clear about who your customer is what your product is and you have to try and connect with your customers at every stage that you possibly can in the best possible way so thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today